Government's holiday begins this week with our film crew in Vienna, where we join last week's winners, three vets from the Scottish borders. Pauline Ian and Jock had beaten teams of tennis coaches and sewerage tunnelling engineers to win a visit to the Austrian capital, where we surprised them at Demel's famous cafe. <laughs> But it was to the Spanish riding school that we took the vets for their busman holiday. This elegant building and its magnificently schooled horses have become symbols of equestrian perfection. Not too many people are allowed to see behind this polished public facade, but that's what our vets were privileged to do. Well, uh, the Spanish Riding School is called Spanish Riding School because in the um, 16th century, where a lot of these schools were founded, they used Spanish horses. The Spanish Riding School, for instance, was first mentioned in 1572, called Spanischer Rostumbelplatz, which means <laughs> just an open-air arena of course, it was the horses the vets had come to see, and Major Vos, the chief instructor, took them on a special tour of the stables. Well, you find uh, the name of the horse always here and the year of birth. Yes. Uh, the name of these stallions uh, are two parts. The first part is the name of the father, the stallion line of the father, and the second name is the name of the mother. Is there any problem with the temperament of stallions compared with... Uh, no, it's because we have only stallions here, and um, I think they even don't know that they are stallions. <laughs> <laughs> I see. What age do you start training? We, sta uh, we start them um, with four. They, this is one of our older ones. You see, he's uh, 23 now. Yeah. Most of the horses uh, don't have shoes. They just walk from the stable to the riding hall and back, and so it's not necessary. Do you retire them? We have summer stables near Vienna, uh, in a park area, and during the whole year we have the retired one and the young ones. So they see grass. The very young ones outside in, in land. I noticed there was some coughing. Do you have a lot of problems with coughing? I can't compare it, so I don't know if it is a lot. I mean, we have a few of them coughing, of course. I was thinking in terms of allergy to, to the strain. I don't and know straw if it's allergy or, or if it's just because they caught, they caught cold. So. And so on to familiar tourist Vienna, where all the horses are not My thoroughbred goodness. stallions. <laughs> that horse has got two left feet. Look at the shape. <laughs> Come on, let's look. Curves inside. Oh, yeah. It's incredible. Poor old soul. Well, let's, let's see how they work in. Let's open it. Even on a busman's holiday, certain sights have to be seen. St. Stephen's Cathedral and its eight centuries of Viennese history. And of course, the Vienna State Opera House, place of pilgrimage for everyone with a single note of music in their soul. Horses and Habsburgs and Habsburgs on horses. And a reminder for our three vets that this is a busman's holiday and that soon they'll be flying back to put their knowledge to the test for a second time. The vets can have their cake and eat it as they return to the studio tonight with the chance of winning the ultimate, the busman's holiday of a lifetime. But first, they have to overcome a challenge from two teams of newcomers. And they are from Glasgow and Strathclyde, <laughs> Her Majesty's Inspectors of Taxis. <laughs> and from Yorkshire and Humberside, a team of navigation officers. <laughs> And the captain of the tax inspectors is John Hughes. Good evening. Good evening. And for my sins, I've been a tax inspector for the last six years. I'm currently serving in Motherwell District with my colleague Bernard on my left-hand side, who has been in the department for less than two years, whereas Franco on my right-hand side has been persecuting the people of Lanark for the last five years. And the captain of our navigation officers is Norman Woodhouse. Good evening. Good evening. 
Uh, on my starboard hand, I have Chris Kemish. On my port hand, I have Bob Luff. We've all worked for North Sea Ferries for uh, approximately 10 years now, and we all serve together on the ferry Norland, which runs between Hull and Rotterdam. So both our challenging teams are hoping to win a busman's holiday somewhere in Europe, or will the vets win that holiday of a lifetime? Well, uh, let's get airborne and see where we land. <laughs> Well, to start with a visual round of geography and travel, here's your first triple option. Which of these three Indian cities, Delhi, Ahmadabad, or Hyderabad, is closest to the famous monument to Taj Mahal? Taxman Frank. Hyderabad. Oh. Bets Ian. Delhi. Correct. In which century did Shah Jahan build the Taj Mahal in memory of his wife, Mumtaz Mahal? 16th century. No, I'm sorry, it was the 17th century. Next triple option. Under federal law in the USA, is 18, 19, or 21 the minimum age uh, navigators Norman? 21. Correct. Prohibition became effective in the USA in January 1920. To, to within a year, can you tell me when it was repealed by the 21st Amendment? Okay. 1936. <laughs> sorry, it was in fact uh, December 1933. Next triple option. When the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was destroyed in 1940 by high winds, did the news reports nickname it Shaking Susie, Wobbling Winnie, or Galloping Gertie? A vet's Pauline. Galloping Gertie. Correct, your follow-up. Which town in the Netherlands was the setting for the war film A Bridge Too Far? Remagen. And no, it wasn't, and you'll kick yourself, it was Arnhem. Munti e Apunseni. Carpati e Meridionali, Munti e Tercaului. Which of these are the Romanian mountains better known as Count Dracula's Transylvanian Alps? Taxman Bernard. Carpathian. Yes, Carpati e Meridionali, your follow up. Which Irish novelist turned the story of Dracula into a world famous novel? Bram Stoker. Correct. Final triple option. Consider these three journeys Stockholm, London, Vienna. Madrid, Zurich, Oslo. Rome, Copenhagen, Paris. Which is the longest route? Vets, Jock. Ma Madrid, Zurich, Oslo. Uh, navigators, Bob. Rome, Copenhagen, Paris. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, it was the other one. Stockholm, London, Vienna. Well, there's obviously nothing in it at the end of the first round, but leading with four points each are the Vets and the Tax Inspector. <laughs> On to the second of tonight's four rounds, just how much do our teams know about each other's occupations? And we start with two tax inspectors and two navigating officers. First of all, question. How many teeth does, does a female goat have? <coughs> Taxman Bernard. Six. <laughs> no, I can offer that. Uh, navigators Norman. Eight. No, it's not. It's two. <laughs> In what species of creature does Newcastle disease occur? Navigators Chris. And pigs. No. I can offer that. <coughs> Taxman Bernard. Sheep. No, it's in domestic poultry and other birds. What is the normal body temperature of a cat to within one degree? <coughs> Taxman Bernard. 37 degrees C. 37. No, I can't accept that, I'm afraid. <coughs> Navigators Chris. 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's in fact, if you want it in Fahrenheit, it's 101.5, or in centigrade, it's 38.5. What type of animal is Lhasa Apso? <coughs> Navigators Chris. It's a dog. Correct. <coughs> well, the remaining members of the tax and the navigation teams will now attempt a brain teaser. Frank and Bob, will you try to identify these six endangered species and uh, place them on their correct country of origin? It's the World Wildlife Fund that provides the information on all endangered species and charts their fortunes. And this is the correct matching that tax inspectors Frank and navigators Bob are seeking. There are fewer than a thousand giant pandas left in China. The Himalaya is home of the very rare snow leopard. The Oran Utan population is down to 150,000. Grevy zebra still survives in Kenya. Lemurs are found only in Madagascar. And finally, Shavalsky's horse. Its survival is in grave doubt. 
and both contestants got everyone right, so it's a draw and one point each. The analogy of the taxmen and the vets can navigate their way through these four questions. What instrument is used by a navigator to measure vets Ian? A sextant. Yes, that's correct. It measures the altitude of a heavenly body. What would you expect to find in a binnacle? Vets Jock. Compass. Correct. Which straits separate the USSR from Alaska? Vets Ian. The Bering Strait. Correct. What are the high tides that occur twice in each lunar month? Vets Jock. Spring. Correct. A celestial brain teaser now faces Bernard of the Tax Inspectors and Pauline of Vets. I want you to complete the jigsaw puzzles of the night sky. And just in case that seems too easy, I would like you to correctly identify the seven constellations. Whether navigators ever use the stars these days, I wonder. It seems to be all satellites and computers. But I'm sure they still recognize the constellation. Certainly this one, the plough. Gemini, the twins. Orion, the hunter. Taurus, the bull. Cassiopeia, the naked virgin tied to a rock. Pegasus, the flying horse. And Cygnus, the swan. Well, both got uh, five constellations correctly identified, but since Bernard was well ahead on time, it's two points for the taxman. <laughs> and that leaves the vets and the navigators to test their memories on matters fiscal. On what day of the week is the budget normally introduced? Vets Ian. Tuesday. Correct. What was the standard rate of VAT when it was first introduced in this country? Vets Ian. 10%. No, I can offer that. Navigators Norman. 15%. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was 8%. On which date does the income tax financial year officially begin? A vet Pauline. After the April. No, I can offer that. 31st of March. No, it's April the 6th. Which of the <coughs> Channel Islands levies no income tax on its inhabitants and does not allow them to run motor cars? Navigators Bob. Oh. Sark. Correct. Now, Jock for the vets and Chris for the navigating officers. These six Europeans all earn about £8,000 a year, but they pay very different rates of tax. Can you allocate to each resident the correct percentage of tax paid? And the three cryptic clues may help you. Well, I don't know whether vets, Jock and navigators, Chris, look after their own tax affairs, but remember, what we're asking them to work out is what percentage of a gross salary of £8,000 is payable in tax in the six countries Assuming other factors such as marital status, etc., are the same. And the correct solution? Danish Eric pays 16.3%. British Harry, 11.4%. Mario from Italy, 11.1%. German Fritz, 10.4%. Dutch Jan, 3.3%. And lucky old French Pierre pays nothing. And again, they each got everything right, so it's one point apiece. We're looking at the scores at the end of the first half. The tax inspectors have been a bit slow making their returns. The navigation officers are, officers are not quite on course yet, but looking remarkably bright-eyed and bushy-tailed with a travel total of 15 are the vets from the Scottish border. <laughs> After the break, any one of the three teams could score up to 36 points and secure that busman's holiday. But one thing's for sure, the going's going to get tougher. See you then. Hi, Matsuko. We buy more oil cost. It's the same. Where's the way? No, no way. It's the same. on a way. We buy more and it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. So, so. I am a questioner. 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 Martini extra dry. Cool. Crisp. 
the extra special taste for any occasion. Once discovered, never lost. Have it with or without. With friends. With pleasure. Martini Extra Dry. It's there to be discovered. Chicken McNuggets, six for only 99p, or nine for just one pound 47. These days, there's really only one way to get round town. The Vauxhall Nova. There's plenty of room inside. The Nova's engine is specially tuned to cut down on gear changing. It's also very nippy, and it corners as well as it's on rails. The clutch is lightness itself, so you arrive at your destination relaxed and unruffled. The Vauxhall Nova. It's really something in the city. within uh, just a few minutes of finding out who's won tonight but there are still two tough rounds to go and the first one concerns their own occupation frank bryan what is the importance of the provisional collection of taxes act of 1968 when an assessment is issued the, the tax as estimated by the taxpayer is paid on the due date even if he appeals against the assessment that is not the answer that I have. The importance of it is that it enables tax to be collected legally while the annual finance bill is going through the House. John Hughes, what is the basic difference between the ICTA 1970 and the TMA 1970? Mm, the Taxes Management Act, the TMA, is concerned with the machinery of taxation, whereas the ICTA, the Income and Corporation Taxes Act, is concerned with the legislation. Correct. Bernard Logue, what is the significance of the tax case Ramsey versus CIR? I think the Ramsey is to do with uh, whether an, ex an item of expenditure is capital or revenue. According to uh, my information, it decided that an avoidance scheme may be looked at as a whole or could well be nullified if its only object was tax avoidance without any commercial motive. You can double that if you can uh, answer this question correctly. Under which two schedules can commercial woodlands be assessed and on what basis of assessment? Mm -hmm. And schedules E and schedules B based on one third of the annual value. The schedule D is based on the preceding year profit. That's correct. And that doubles your total to four. Now to the vets, Pauline Richardson. What single factor is responsible for keratoconjunctivitis sicker in the dog? Um, the lack of tears to the surface of the eye. Correct. Ian Gillespie, what is Galvane's groove? Galvane's groove is a, a groove in a horse's tooth that uh, as it descends with the tooth, you can tell approximately the age of the horse. Uh, yes, that is absolutely correct. Jock Key, name a two of the causes of a non-union fracture. Excessive mobility around the fracture site. Correct. And infection at the fracture site. Correct. And your team question, which will enable you to uh, double up and earn the maximum. Name three endoparasites of domesticated dogs. Toxocra canis. Correct. 
Dipodidium, dipodidium canium. Correct. And a kind of coppice, can you lose it? That's perfectly correct, and you double your score to a maximum of 12. <laughs> On to the navigators. Chris Camish, can you describe the features of a loxodromic curve? It's a line on the Earth's surface which spirals towards the pole. Norman Woodhouse, what is the interval in mean solar time between two successive transits of a star over the same meridian to the nearest minute? 23 hours, 59 minutes. 23 hours... Well, I'm afraid the answer is 23 hours and 56 minutes. I could have accepted uh, 57 <coughs> or even 55. Bad luck. Bob Loss, your vessel's in a traffic separation scheme and you observe another vessel coming towards you apparently not complying with the requirements of the traffic flow for that lane. What international code signal would you make? At least five short and rapid blasts on the whistle and then take appropriate action to avoid him. That's not the answer I have here. The answer here is Yankee Golf. If you can answer your team question correctly, you can still score two. Ship masters are required to report specific navigational hazards to all ships by TTT or Securite. Give three of the particular hazards. Missing navigational mark. Correct. Derelict ships. And iceberg. Correct. Those are all correct. And you've scored your two. Looking at the scores at the end of round three, the relative positions have changed very little, except that the tax inspectors have just been able to pull up a little on the navigational officers, but still well in the lead with a travel total of 27 are the vets from the Scottish border. <laughs> so we enter the final stage of tonight's contest. The teams have been warned of four possible countries or cities they may be questioned on, but they still don't know which one. So what is tonight's research round subject? So it's 12 questions on Athens. Two points for a correct answer, but beware because an incorrect answer forfeits two. Which Athenian philosopher killed himself in 399 BC? A vet Ian. Socrates. Correct. What color are Greek letter boxes? Navigators Chris. Yellow. Correct. Of what sort of stone is the Parthenon built? Vets Jock. Marble. Correct. Who were the first people to erect arches in Athens? Vets Jock. The Roman. Correct. Which Greek goddess was the twin sister of Apollo and goddess uh, taxman Frank? Artemis. Correct. In which year were the first Olympic Games of Mo Navigators Chris? 1779. Uh, no, it was 1896. Forfeit The goddess Athena, after whom the city was named, was the Greek goddess of what? Navigators Bob. Wisdom. Correct. Which holiday is celebrated in Greece on March the 25th? Taxman Frank. Carnathian Walt. No, it's Independence Day. Which octagonal tower built by the Syrian architect Andronikos in the first century BC is also called uh, Navigators Bob? Tower of the Wind. Correct. Which sport takes place at the Athens Ippodromos? Uh, taxman Bernard. Horse racing. Correct. Penultimate question. On which hill, with a name meaning tightly packed space, do tour uh, Navigators Bob? The Pnyx. Correct. And your final question. What is the English for the nickname of the square Clathomos, where subjects of King Otto used to go to register complaints? Vets Jock. Agora. It's not, no. It's the sobbing square, and you forfeit too, but it's going to make no difference because it's the end of the round, the end of the game, and way in the lead with 31 points are the vets from the Scottish border. <laughs> Thanks.
two, of course, to the uh, other contestants, the navigation officers. How did you compare with navigating down to the Falkland? It's far more terrifying here. <laughs> And uh, thanks to the tax inspectors, it's nice to know that you don't always win. Now let's find out where in the whole wide world you're going on your busman's holiday of a lifetime. You'll need your sun hats and binoculars next week as you'll be going on safari in East Africa. You'll fly 9,000 miles to the Kenyan capital of Nairobi. And after relaxing for a few days, you'll set out for Kikorok Lodge in the Masai Mara in search of big game. In the most exciting wildlife park in the world, you'll see lions, hippos, giraffes, and elephants. See you next week for your bus month's holiday on Safari in Kenya. If your team would like to compete in the quiz, send now for details to Busman's Holiday, Granada Television, Manchester M60 9EA.